Hey everybody. So you're here because you're wondering how can I use Excel to help me do simple hypothesis tests? And I'm here to tell you uh, Excel can do it, but it's nowhere near as straightforward as it should be. It should be like three mouse clicks. Instead, it's like five mouse clicks, which is ridiculous and is one more reason why you should hate Excel. But we all have to use it. So here I'll show you how to do a simple example on hypothesis testing using Excel. We'll compare the results um, with a by hand calculation. Let's dive right in. So let's work out an example real quick by hand before we go into Excel. Let's say that we uh, would like to fill something up uh, with 32 ounces of fluid. Uh, we don't want to overfill, we don't want to underfill. So periodically we sample 15 bottles of this stuff and we see whether we're over or underfilling. Since both over and underfilling is bad, a two sample or two sided test is the natural test that we want to do. If we're testing at the 5% level, um, then we need to just reflect that in the critical values. Now critical values are going to be um, two numbers where so this will be critical value 1 and this will be critical value 2 that accounts for all but 5% of the probability. So in other words, 95% is going to be here and then 5% is going to be in the tails. And since they're split equally, 2.5 goes here and 2.5% goes there. Now this particular critical value is going to account for 95 plus 2.5% of all observations. So we need to find this particular value from our t distribution. It's going to be a t because we, we don't know the sample variance and we have a you know, small sample. So some value from a t distribution that accounts for 97.5%. We can find that in Excel or by consulting um, a standard table from a t-distribution. In Excel, we do t.inverse, we give it the probability, which is 97.5, and then we key in the degrees of freedom, which is always one less than the sample size. So put in 14 right there. Key that into Excel, and you'll get 2.14, for one critical value and negative 2.14 for the other critical value. Now after that all we have to do is take our sample of 15 models, see how they're filled. Let's suppose that they're, they're a little bit overfilled by about 0.68 ounces. The standard deviation is 1.01 which is a variance of around 1.03 uh, and then we need a test statistic. The procedure should be familiar. Take your actual mean, divide by the hypothesized mean of 32, and then divide by the standard error, which is the standard deviation, divided by the square root of the sample size. And if you key that into Excel or a calculator, you'll get 2.59 for your test statistic. Now, 2.59 is bigger than 2.14. So your test statistic of 2.59 falls squarely in one of our two rejection regions. So what do we do? We reject the null hypothesis. In other words, this is no longer a tenable kind of hypothesis. Instead, we have to conclude that the average is not 32 and that we're probably overfilling our, um, our bottles here by a little bit more than 32 ounces. Now all this is well and fun and good um, but we used Excel a bunch. We used Excel here to calculate our test statistic, we, uh, our critical values. We used Excel here for our test statistic. If we're going to be using Excel anyway, it'd be nice to just have Excel do everything for us. So let's switch over to Excel and see how to do that. So here's a spreadsheet with our sample data of 15 observations. We'd like to run some statistics on it. The thing is, is that Excel can do a whole bunch of things, including statistics, but it wants to put kind of like on the back burner, uh, tucked away 
some of the capabilities that isn't like super commonly used. And statistics is one of those things. So it can do it, but you're going to have to find it. The way to do that is by installing something called the Data Analysis Tool Pack. If you haven't installed the Analysis Tool Pack, it's really easy. Just go into File, Options, Add-ins, and then find the Analysis Tool Pack and click OK. I've already installed it, so I'm not going to click on that. Once you've installed the Analysis Tool Pack, you can click on the Data tab, and then you can find the Data Analysis Toolkit all the way to the right. You can click on that, and here it shows us all of the various statistical techniques that it can do, some of the, the more complicated ones. And what we want is a t-test. But notice that all of our options here talk about two samples, right? comparing two different means. We only have one sample. Right? We want to know what the, the mean of this particular sample is, whether it's an overfill of more than 32 or less than 32. So what we have to do then is trick Excel into answering a one sample question with these 15 observations, but it thinks it's answering a two sample question. And the way to do that, let me cancel this out right here, is to create a mock second sample. The way to do that is to just key in a few zeros. Two or three is fine. I'll go ahead and just do all 15. It's kind of, it doesn't matter. Now that I have two samples, now let's open up that tool pack. So we click on it, and we want to click on two sample, assuming unequal variances. And the reason why it would be two different variances is because, well, in this second sample, that number doesn't vary, so the, the variance is zero. In fact, if I put nothing but fives in here, the variance of a bunch of fives is zero because it's all fives. It doesn't vary. So column A varies, column B doesn't. Clearly, we need to have unequal variances. So click on unequal variances, and then we get to start inputting our information into Excel. So let's make sure that our cursor is in this first window, and then highlight the data. So A1 through A15. Put your cursor in the second window, and now you'll input the dummy data bunch of zeros. Now the hypothesized mean difference. See, Excel wants to look at the difference between two means. For us, the hypothesized value for the fill of how much motor oil we have was 32. And so the difference between whatever this thing is we think is 32 and this, 0, that difference between 32 and 0 will be 32. So even though this says hypothesized mean difference, go ahead and just put your null hypothesis number there. For us, it was that the true mean was 32. We don't have any labels in our data set, so we don't click that, and our significance level was 0 0.05. The last thing we need to do is tell it where to print the output of this statistical exercise. I'd like to keep everything on the same page. So I'm going to click on Output Range, and then minimize this thing by clicking on this little button. I want to tell it, let's put everything right there. So all my output should start printing from cell D1. Expand it, click OK, and sure enough, all of this wonderful output starts from cell D1. Now let's look at what Excel gave us. So. Here it tells us the means of these two columns of data. The average for this columns of real data was 32.678, and the average of a bunch of zeros is zero. The variance of a bunch of zeros is zero, and the variance of these guys is 1.03. We got the number of observations. The hypothesized mean, well, it's not the mean difference anymore, really, it's, it's the mean. Um, was 32, just like we specified. Now we're doing a two-tailed test here, so we need to know what the test statistic is. Let's bold that. Bold that. Um, we're not doing a one-tailed test, 
So um, we could, but um, we're not doing that right now. So let's get rid of that. Um, and let's focus then on the, the two-tailed stuff, especially um, the critical value. Okay, so we have everything that we need now to do a test. We've got critical values and test statistics. These numbers should look very familiar. We had 2.59 for our test statistic and 2.14 for our critical value. If we switch over, we see those same numbers come up again, right? We had a critical value of 2.14 and a test statistic of 2.59. So Excel gave us the two-sided critical values automatically, gave us the test statistic automatically. We just had to trick it into converting a two-sample data set to really answer a one-sample problem. Now you might be asking, how did this trick work? Like why? By what kind of black magic did we just trick Excel? Well, let's have a look at the formulas and we'll see. The reason why our trick with Excel worked is that the two sample formula and the one sample formula are related. Specifically, we can go from the two sample formula back to the one sample formula under a certain number of key conditions. But remember that when we keyed in all of our data, we had real data for X2, 32, 31.18, 32.7, I forget what those numbers were. But I remember very well that the X2s were nothing but zeros, which means that the average of X2 was zero. So. So that guy right there is a zero. And so x1 bar minus zero is just x1 bar. We told Excel that the hypothesized difference between variable one and variable two was 32. Okay? Because we actually thought that was the value for our true data set. The average for a bunch of zeros is just going to be zero. So this difference between 32 and zero is just 32. Right? 32 is both the difference and the value for our first variable. So our numerator now is x1 minus 32 because we were subtracting off the of zero. Now what about our standard errors? Remember that we had a bunch of zeros. Those don't vary. The variance of a bunch of zeros is zero. The standard deviation of a bunch of zeros is zero. There's no, they don't vary. So the variance of our second variable is zero. So our numerator here is zero. And zero divided by any number of observations, we had 15. Could have been 2 or 3. 0 divided by 2, 0 divided by 15, it's all 0. And so adding 0 is irrelevant. And that leaves us with our original variance divided by the sample size, and then we square root it. And notice then that our new kind of tweaked two sample formula really is the same thing as our one sample formula. And the reason it worked is we had a bunch of zeros which had no variance. So that's why our little trick works. In summary, to do a one sample test, have Excel think it's doing a two sample test, but have the second sample be completely pointless. Okay, that's it. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.